Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it's time for a bench press day. Um, I don't know that we should even call these bench press days anymore. Should I start just calling this upper body days? <laughs> because I really only do three sets of bench. Uh, so in keeping with what I've been doing, I'm benching wide, benching with a flat back. Uh, today I decided to make it a little harder on my pecs. I benched a little higher on the chest and set it down on my stomach. Sure enough, it did feel even more difficult felt only chest activation and that's been um, you know the interesting thing with this this style of benching that I'm doing I, I don't feel anything but my chest right I mean I feel some front delt but obviously I feel my pecs get a deep stretch and I'm not really feeling triceps at all you know and, and whereas in triceps seem to make a big difference on my my power type benching um, just worth noting but that also means that yeah I better really really double down on the tricep work so I'll talk about that uh, a little further into this. this is going to be a long vlog. I clipped out a lot of the back and forth getting up and down just to get this vlog down to about 15 minutes uh, when I included all my footage and that doesn't count the warm-up sets which are minimal. Um, I want to be clear here if I can lift a weight for 10 reps I don't need warm-up sets. I just don't. I think that's, that's silly. Um, you know so if I were actually not only just doing sets across I probably would just go straight to 225 on the bench like why would I warm up? Um, but because I do ramp up to the 275, I do a couple of warm-up sets first. I start with the bar. You know, same thing on the incline, just to make sure it's set right. I do a rep with uh, one plate aside. So just a disclaimer, I do a little bit of warming up. Um, so I felt like when I went to this style of benching, I run out of reps really, really fast. Like even the 225, I was doing 10s with this last time pause. But today, when I, when I kind of put it a little higher on the chest, my pecs were just giving out right they felt like they were giving out further in uh, the upside my shoulder mobility has improved enough that i'm able to do these these pull-ups i got sets of 10 i got 10 on all three sets take them to a dead stop at the bottom and i know some people be like well it looks like you should be able to stretch further yeah but as my shoulder health improves i will but those are hangs if you notice me swinging on some of those uh, that's that is hanging and i'm going to keep working it it's improved i'm actually able to do pull-ups again and the pullovers and stuff are helping a lot. Uh, so I want to be clear there. That has been a very valuable tool. Oh, on a new low on the scale today. Um, we'll call it 218, but I'm, I'm weighing in in kilos. And when I converted it over, it was 217.5. But I don't, I want to round to the nearest. And 0.5 always rounds up. So we'll call it 218. But just making a note, uh, the scale is continuing to just come down. Uh, so for me, eating 3,500 calories, if I, I hit at least 350 grams of protein, sometimes more, uh, still puts me in a total net deficit, you know, with the thermic effect and everything, because the scale is dropping. I'm down, uh, you know, 10 pounds plus at this point inside of a month, okay? And I'm actually eating a little more salt and stuff just because I feel like I need it. I'm adding, uh, you know, a lot of pickles and olives to, to my chicken, you know, my chicken and vegetables. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, my diet is, is at this point most, mostly protein, healthy fats, and then moderated carbs. I wouldn't say I'm eating uh, true low carbs by anyone's real definition. I'm just not eating, you know, 600 grams of carbs. But they were, you know, my dominant calorie for a while. But it worked great for the lean bulk, right? I really didn't, I gained no fat over the course of the year. So I bulked, put on weight, but uh, no, no apparent fat gain. Because people are like, oh, wow, you're the leanest we've ever seen you. I'm only three, four weeks into my cut for the entire year. I didn't cut at all. All right, so back over to the training. Uh, I really don't feel like my chest is truly fatigued really quickly. So I'm only doing about five real pressing sets for chest. I'm just letting pullovers and stuff handle the rest. Uh, same thing with the back. I feel like I can get away with five good sets plus the pullovers because I'm doing the, the deadlifts and RDLs and stuff on the lower days. Uh, so I feel like my back is getting good stimulus still, right? So I can really focus on some of these smaller muscles uh, that really need the volume. So this, I'm, I'm just focusing on these quality sets, trying to get, uh, you know, within a rep or two of failure. Uh, most of, a lot of these sets are, are one rep from failure or right at. Uh, so like even the rows, what I do, I take a little longer holds at the bottom as I get closer so that I know I wouldn't be able to squeeze another rep. But some of those that, that is coming down and I can't strictly pull up another rep, I could cheat a rep. 
So it really is failure. Kind of the same on the on the pull-ups, and I know that last rep is really hard on the final set, and I probably couldn't get another. I try to lower it slow on the eccentric just to kind of say, look, I know that for a fact I can't get another rep now. So it, it's right at failure. But some of those sets, like the rows, actually are failure. It's just that when I get to the bottom, people don't realize I try to squeeze and contract again, and the weight doesn't move, so that's it. Uh, it's the same on a lot of the curls. All right, uh, the incline, though, I did sets of 10 with that, and that was uh, like that that last rep there. I don't think I had another rep. It moved slow. It was all I had. So it's kind of what I'm doing on these rows is the same thing. And I'm trying to take these down to a full stretch at the bottom. Notice I'm letting it stretch my lats. You almost see me dipping a little. It's because I'm just trying to let it, it pull me down. Um, but, uh, again, the cut's going well. Uh, uh, I'm really thinking at this point, I had said before I'm going to get to two, to 210 and assess, but that's only eight pounds away. I'm over halfway there since I've started. I don't know that 210 is going to be lean enough. Let, let's be honest here. What's going to give me the best outreach and improve people listening to me so that we can get my message out about training? I probably need to get real lean. Um, and, and that's cool. I'm actually not really getting hungry or anything. Uh, the biggest downside to with the cutting right now is just the feeling of fatigue and tiredness. Irritability is fine. I'm not hungry because I'm eating vegetables and I'm eating ridiculous amounts of protein. So I'm actually not getting hungry, particularly with the water. So hunger has been almost non-existent with it. So it's actually been very effective there. Uh, so with the skull crushers, I, I did these with supersets with the curls. On these, though, the weight felt lighter. You know, people are kind of like, oh, you're going too heavy. But it's like you guys notice I have control up at the top on these. Because I, I'm trying to control it at the top and squeeze a little harder, I can only get 10. But then I decided, you know what, maybe I'll take the reps down. Because I get plenty of, of heavy tension on the pull-ups and stuff. So I'm like, okay, I mean, I can go up to 14s or 15s. You know, that's just the problem. I get people who... who really feel like this isn't full range of motion and I'm laughing because look at where my forearm is on those. It's touching the bicep. That's full range of motion for the, the bicep. And the hardest part then, I have the most tension right there at the top. So it's it's way more tension at the top than people who are getting recurling of their face. And, but I'm going to a full stretch at the bottom and bringing the weight to a stop, leaning forward so that um, my thigh doesn't stop it but I feel a great pump the only thing is I'm noticing even when I go that heavy I am noticing that that inflammation a little bit in the forearm even with the wrist back so I'm a little worried about that so I took it down for the last set and um, I took the the skull crusher bar but these I'm getting like 15s so I think what I might do just so I can use those 25s on the other curl bar next time I might just work with those I might just throw the 25s on that other bar and you just put three tens on that so that we can actually see the skull crusher better on top of it because the plate's blocking the view, right? The plate's blocking the view uh, for the camera. And so something I want to experiment with a little bit here uh, is going to be really high volumes for just one muscle, you know, because I don't believe that that generally works. I think the really high volume, I think it's, it's, it's really problematic even though there's data starting to come out showing otherwise. So I'm like, let me experiment with just the triceps. I did that before and it did help with my close grip bench. Uh, my triceps are still probably, I think my worst muscle group is actually not biceps, it is triceps. My biceps are way stronger than my triceps when I do straight movements. So I'm like, okay, I'll double down and do the band work, right? Because again, I can really get that stretch reflex with the bands. Um, I can hit a ton of volume, it gets a crazy pump. You know, whereas, and I'll keep doing these to make sure we get a really heavy loaded stretch through a full range of motion. And then because of the bands with that tension I run, I can't always lock them. Even when I'm doing 20, 30, 40 reps, even one or, rep one or two, it won't lock because of the, uh, the nature of the accommodating resistance. But it lights my triceps up and it does take them into that stretch. So I, I may mess with that. Um, and today I did nine sets on them. I was hoping I got 10, but I lost count. I lost count right but here these curls are a little lighter pretty much it looks just like the others it's just that I can get more reps with it I think I did like 15 and then my biceps just kind of failed but they felt good 
And again, I'm okay with that because as long as I keep progressing on the dead hang pull-ups and stuff, I feel like there's going to be a lot of mechanical tension on my arms. So that handles that tension side. I can come in and, and really just focus upon this higher rep stuff. You know, that's the other topic that came up. Um, that's come up a couple times, and I guess I'll address that. You know, people are like, are you focusing on strength or, or size and looks now? I'm like, look, I have focused on strength or strength and weight classes for a decade on YouTube. That's what I've done for a decade. You guys have seen me hit some pretty pretty big lifts. You know what? The people who are successful in strength as far as marketing still look good. I'm going to have to focus a while on looking good while still caring about strength. So for me, it's now 50-50. Let's just call it what it is. I'm going to chase looking better, looking more jacked, more athletic, right? Which means I'm going to get leaner. I'm going to stack more muscle onto my upper body, onto my arms, right? Bigger arms, tighter waistline, less body fat. Just get hard. Just get hard and solid. Still going to give me good lift pound for pound anyway it breaks down. Once I'm down sufficiently lean enough, I'll push the big lifts back up a little harder. Focus on muscle mass so that I have the muscle to do that. But I think because I'm still doing some low reps and everything, look, I'm still doing five, six reps on squat and deadlift and bench variations. That's still going to carry over to good maxing. I may be doing slightly harder versions, but it's going to carry over. So again, here I'm doing all my pull-ups or my pullovers. I feel like these have done a lot for me. So I've really turned into a big fan of these. I've turned into a big fan of the pullovers because um, I feel like they're helping my shoulder mobility. Uh, you know, and people keep asking, and I don't, I don't know why they keep asking, um, because I would think it would be apparent that these exercises, this is an exercise that does work muscle. Um, it's Old school guys swore by this for both pecs and lats. Um, I think it does help with some shoulder development. So it's not just the mobility. And I feel it all through my mid traps. I feel it in my lats. Um, I feel those areas a lot. I feel the chest stretch. I feel long head of the tricep. So yes, it's still a muscle builder. Uh, and it's a very popular old school one. But what I decided to do here again, do lots of sets of the band press downs. Let's see how this works out. And I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to do these the way that I know they carried over to my, my clothes grip before when I was doing tons of these and not care what people think. Because again, at the end of the day, what builds muscle the most? The stretch position. And it's just easy to set the bands up that way. If I grab them that way, set them up, the bands aren't flopping everywhere. They're not hitting me in the face. It's just... It's a nice, easy way to get a consistent set in. Take sets to failure. Most of those sets were to failure. Just get a lot of volume in with very, very short breaks just to finish off a muscle that I've built with other stuff because I've done pressing. Then I did extensions, uh, again, in the form of skull crushers. So then I'll use the bands to uh, finish them off. And I think uh, that we'll see how it goes. And if... If these people are right who claim that the really high volume can add stuff, then my worst muscle group, my lagging muscle group, again, we should see relatively decent progress in it, you know, even in spite of the deficit. I think particularly given the protein. In fact, I, I almost make a joke at some of the evidence-based people who throw out some nonsense who are small and weak themselves. They pull this. So you only need 150 grams of protein and 30 grams of carbs a day to maximize gains. It's like, wow, what a, that's crazy. Um, that's insane. If that were true, then I should have no trouble gaining tons of muscle with my current diet while losing weight. Because I'm eating a lot of fat with that. I'm eating way more protein and carbs than that. So... I decided to do some really high rep lateral raises in between with the plates because I can keep my arms straighter. I have no idea how many reps I did. I just did it till it burned. <laughs> I just did them till I burned. But you know, those felt good and they're easy to do to, to just sit over and do with plates. So I might try that with a couple of plates in each hand. I don't know. They just felt really easy to do. I didn't have to mess with setting up dumbbell handles. Um, felt like I could really get a good pump. So those, those might be worth doing. I just did the one set just to, to try them and see how they felt today because I've done those before. And I think they might be worth doing as some super sets. That was me checking the camera, making sure it was on. But I'm like, oh, let me just leave it in. I think it shows where I'm at in terms of thickness. But 
you know, I, I may work some of those in and just superset them with the bands just to give me something to do between it and to, again, maybe work, work the side delts a little more, right? Work the side delts and just build this stuff up. All right, so again, I'm just going to do this pump work right at the end. We'll see how much difference it makes. Uh, because again, focusing on the main work, and keep in mind, I'm still training hard on the main work, even though it's a lot of, you know, six to ten rep stuff. It's still hard work. And I'm focusing on quality sets there. So again, it's still relatively heavy. And I'm still doing some heavy work in there, obviously. And then we'll just come in, we'll do all this pump stuff, Right, we'll do the pump stuff, do the volume for these smaller muscles right here at the end. Uh, get some quality pump volume in while I continue to cut down, and we will see what it does. Let's just watch what happens with it, and and I think it'll be a little fun experiment. I've done stuff like this before when fatter uh, and seem to gain muscle. So again, just gonna roll with it. I'm gonna get more jacked, more lean, and then bring my maxes back up once I look better.